new video of Mariupol and Ukraine south. The mayor estimates there's at least 10,000 people dead. Based on the video, you could imagine there are a whole lot more. We've been telling you for weeks that calling Vladimir Putin a war criminal or threatening to put him on trial is a little like trying to teach a pig to sing. Frustrates you and annoys the pig. Now we know what the annoyed pig is doing. As if to prove the point, Putin just appointed this man, Alexander Dorinko, a general renowned for his brutal tactics to take over the failed invasion of Ukraine. Dmitry Alpervich, founder of the Silverado Policy Accelerator, former advisor to the U.S. Department of Defense with us now. Was the leadership the problem or the Russian army the problem? Well, I think both. The problem that they had, of course, one of the problems is that they had a lot of generals in charge, too many cooks in the kitchen. And Dvornikov, one, is a very, very brutal guy. He's demolished Aleppo. He was in, uh, part of the team that uh, demolished Grozny back in 99. But he's also been the most effective general of the war so far. He commands the southern military district, the one that it's took uh, Kherson, of course, and was attacking Mariupol and has leveled Mariupol. All right, so we're over here at the maps to sort of give you a sense of how this has changed. It's pretty interesting. Since you and I last talked, there's nothing now around uh, Kiev and Cherniv. Uh, Sumi, any of this, this is all now fully back in Ukrainian control. Does the general have an advantage now, not only known for these brutal tactics, but he's now operating in an area that is mostly ethnically Russian over in the Donbass. You've had Russian soldiers there for a while. He's got supply lines right next to Russia and the Ukrainian supplies, all the new ones have to come all the way over from Poland. Well, it's definitely simpler for them the supply lines closer to Russia being probably the most important thing. I'm not sure how much the Russian, the Russian ethnic population is helping him because the Russians have done a great job of turning the entire population, even if they were Russian speaking and had Russian allegiances before the war against them with the brutalities that they've orchestrated. But here's the problem that they have. They still have a huge fight on their hands, 40 to 70,000 Ukrainian troops right now in the Donbass region, probably more flooding in right now. It's not gonna be easy for them. Uh Real quick, President Zelensky on 60 Minutes uh, over the weekend. Take a listen. President Biden says he is outraged by Bucha. NATO leaders say they are outraged by Bucha. So what should they do now? Weapons, number one. They need to be very serious about it. They definitely understand what I'm talking about right now. They have to supply weapons to Ukraine as if they were defending themselves and their own people. Are there enough weapons that can be flooded in that the Ukrainians know how to use to allow them to fully beat the Russian army in the east? Well, what they need is a lot of things. They need more tanks, and, and there is concern about how many Soviet-era tanks you can send that NATO has to send to Ukraine. But they also need a lot of small arm ammunition. They need a lot of switchblade drones. Some of them we have been sending, but of course we don't have that many. That's a huge problem because the Russians have a lot of equipment, but they're short on personnel. The Ukrainians have the reverse problem. They have a lot of people because they've enlisted everyone, but they have very short on equipment and weapons. Hmm. Wanted to get your thought uh, in, ter in terms of where this, where this is headed. Uh, reports now out of Mariupol that there was some kind of chemical attack. And there's been this, uh, yes, there will be, but it's going to be a false flag. But no, it's not. But it might have happened. How much of what we're hearing right now and have heard over the weekend should we really believe about this stuff? Well, we have to be careful, but of course, Russia does have a history of using chemical weapons, not just for assassinations like they did against Alexander Navalny, one of Putin's opponents and a number of others, but also in Syria, where they were dropping barrels of chemical weapons on Aleppo and other cities. So this is par for the course for them that we don't quite know yet if they did in Mariupol, but it's certainly disturbing reports. Alexander Slavdikov, Russia's state military commentator in, on social media, is quoted by The Wall Street Journal. Let them see Kiev and Lviv uh, and a bunch of other Ukrainian towns, which I don't know how to pronounce. But Kiev and Lviv never really got annihilated. If the city doesn't surrender, it gets annihilated. The cities of central and western Ukraine will also be destroyed if they decide to resist Russian troops. Um, is there a sort of a sense of Russian uh, uh, kind of this grandiose propaganda that the army can't back up? So you've now got this month until... May 9th, when the Russians celebrate victory, the World War II victory, and that's when Vladimir Putin says, look, I've gotten most of the East. We've liberated the Nazis from the East, and 
from Mariupol, let's call it a day? Well, this is the problem that they're going to face. Even if they manage to take the Donbass, which won't be easy, and they may not even be able to do it, but even if they do, they still need some sort of political resolution with Zelensky. And they're not likely to get it now that the pressure off Kiev is off. So what you're likely to see now is further pummeling of Kiev and other cities with airstrikes, with artillery um, and missiles, and of course, cyber as well, to try to harass the Ukrainian population to submission. I don't think it'll work, but I think they're going to try it. Yeah, you think about Zelensky, who just got a visit over the weekend from Boris Johnson, the British prime minister, walking in like Winston Churchill at Dunkirk or something, uh, has certainly been uh, emboldened and put on the world stage. Uh, hey, Dimitri, as always, incredible analysis. Thank you. It's good to see you after a long weekend. Thanks so much, Leland. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.